What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Nobody's Favorite Podcast. Appreciate you guys coming back, man. It's been a few weeks. Um, took a little hiatus, man. I had a couple things I had to take care of, but that's neither here nor there. We might get into that on another episode. But today, we have my favorite collector, soon to be your favorite collector, the toy aficionado, Tony B. Toy Rats. Let's give it up for him, everybody. Let's give it up for him. Yeah, 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 that's my guy. My guy. It's Oi Rat. It's Oi Rat. It's almost too much. Almost yeah, yeah, yeah. too much. Almost too much. No, it, wasn't. it was just, it was just enough. I thought all she was right, all right. for the yeah. I mean, we... Hey, y'all. What's up? What's up? What's going on, man? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. Talk to the people. Podcast. Yeah, man. Proud, proud sponsor. Nobody's favorite toy reviewer. That's what I'll be. On nobody's, nobody's favorite, favorite toy reviewer. Right. Nobody's favorite. I mean, <laughs> shit, bro. As of right now, maybe afterward, I'll be somebody's favorite toy reviewer. As of right nah, now, they're gonna love nobody. you. They're gonna love you after this. Nah, they're gonna love you after this. We about to talk. We about to talk That's about some shit that. Uh, yeah, man. All right. So look, this is what we about to get into, man. Um. So who the fuck are you, bro? Who are you? Who's Tony? Who is Tony the Toy Rat? You on the show? People, people have been listening to this for a while, watching this for a while. Like, who are you? Who are you, guy? Okay, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? I would say, um, I'm what every 48 year old man wants to be. Mm. I, I have uh, spent the first part of my career doing all that mundane, dumb shit you have to get paid to do. Just so I can learn how to do it on my own, just so I could completely dismiss that and play with toys. <laughs> so that's where we are right now. Now, that, that, I mean, it's it's a little bit of bullshit. It's uh, a little bit of bullshit. But I would say nowadays at 48, I probably spend more time opening, unboxing, playing with, editing videos for toys than I do the business I own, which is in construction remodeling and interior design which is actually where we make our money we i my wife would say we mm. yeah. no but it's me so in any it's case yeah, you know, her money. Spend, um yeah, 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 yeah. i don't know if you heard that but i'm not gonna have it in a place that can be repeated so boop, boop, boop. uh no i mean she works her end of it she actually works for the company she's my admin so nice. when she nice. feels like working i uh, get lots of work out of her <laughs> when she feels like working that's what i said um so i'll give you the genesis on the background of the tony the toy rat scenario yeah how do you feel about buying i'm gonna i'm gonna turn let me turn this around let me turn this look yeah, so man show us all look, out, this, look at this setup yeah, yeah 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 check it out check it out so the vast majority of what you're gonna see in my setup in here is from a company called diamond select toys um at, all around the room in here we are, we've got toys just like lined up all over. Look, I'm show you, showing you. Uh, but on, on the down, down here, we have resin toys that are boxed up. I've got shit everywhere right now. Mm. Um, there's a whole nother shelf on that side, which is loaded up with more toys. And then finally, I got the Batman section back the here. Walls, the walls up. is crazy. Yeah. Oh, you talking about the colors? You know what's that funny about thing. these colors? This used to be my son's room. This was the Giants room. So behind my TV, it actually says Giants. And then when I took it over from my office, I was like, yo, this makes the perfect toy room. Yeah, that, so that's, that's where we have. That red, white, and blue is perfect Avengers colors. Avengers or or Captain America Captain or same Captain thing. Puerto Rico or whatever. Captain Puerto Rico. Damn, I'm, I'm all interesting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Captain America really is. If nobody he knows, is. look at you. Look at his logo Dang, on him. It's, it's Captain Puerto Rico. It's a shining star. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Puerto, Puerto Rico is one star, right? America is how many? All right, so it's Captain it. America only wears one star. That's Captain Puerto Rico. Right. He's either Never Captain America or Captain Texas. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Why you got to put that out there? I was going with Puerto <laughs> Rico, bro. You know what? Texas doesn't have the colors. So mm. that would still be Puerto Rico. Mm. 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 Okay. Just wanna... mm. 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 All right. See, so, look at this guy. Look at this guy. I, all these these toys. Oh, man. This hat is hot as fuck. So you're going to have to excuse me. It's Gonzo, though. You like that? Nice. Nice. This is actually a Diamond Select toy, too. I opened so, up an entire Muppet Show package. Here's my whole, here's my, here's my favorite Diamond Select that I have. I have other ones. I have other ones. I have bigger ones. But this is my favorite because everyone knows I love the Joker. Here's my favorite Diamond Select that I have. 
That is fuzzy as fuck and can't see it right now, but I'm sure it's oh, cute. Oh, man. Well, you will see it when you watch this back. You'll see it when it comes up when you watch, watch it back. back. And it won't be fuzzy. It'll, it'll be beautiful. Be now. Yeah, it's <laughs> dope. I wanted more of the DC line shit mm -hmm. from them, from the Diamond Select teams, but they um, they managed to lose the license to McFarlane Toys, which we'll talk about oh, in a minute. Okay. Because I feel like the, those motherfuckers ain't doing shit but a cash grab, bro. Uh, they're at like 18,000 different fucking Batmans. And come on, you know, you need three and then you're done. How many fucking Batman can you have? The Shit, Batman like Funko. Just got I got about 30 them. Funkos. I got 30 Funkos on my wall, different Batmans. Yeah, okay. I probably have like six Batman. That's what I'm saying. It's a never ending glut of Batman. No. Nope. So <laughs> I, I don't have much in the DC way from, um, from the Diamond Select Toys. But here's how this goes. Bing. So I'm buying these things because I'm a collector. I'm thinking I'm a collector, right? At this point, I've got like eight or 10 of them. And every time you get one of these Diamond Select toys, they come with this thing, right? Okay. So this thing in here, you open it up and you fill it out and it tells you all about, you know, the company or the toy that you bought, where you bought it from. And I'm like, yo, I, I'm the only dickhead in America that literally is filling all these shits out and sending them in. So I had bought like eight or 10 or something like that, thinking I'm a collector. And I shoot, I, I get pissed off because I'm sending all these, these little um, comment cards back to the company and not even a thank you, nothing. You know, I, I, I thought I might get a discount or something. Somebody give me something, nothing. So I wait around for like two weeks after the last purchase I made. And I was like, you know what? Fuck that. I'm going to be that dude. I'm going to be that Karen nigga. And I'm going to jump online and I'm going to find a way. And so I start cranking away, looking for shit. And I cannot tell you how I came across an email address for the head of marketing for Diamond Select Toys. Okay. And I send them a, a, I send them a message. At this point, I, I watch YouTube, but I've never made a video. I don't have a channel. I'm not Tony the Toy Rat. I'm just... Tony the fucking nerd who has bought a bunch of toys and wants a response to some free shit. Tony the construction worker. So I sent him an email. Tony the construction worker, Tony the remodel, and Tony not the rap yet. So I, I hit up this email address and I'm straight up. I'm like, listen, uh, I, I'm a little perturbed at the situation. Okay. <laughs> I, I am an avid collector. I'm collecting your toys. I'm sending your comment cards. And not one time has anybody ever responded. Uh, reached out to me to offer any kind of incentives to continue this purchase level. And uh, I, I, I feel like you're not paying attention to your audience. Oh, and by the way, uh, if you need somebody to review these things, I'm your guy. Fuck, I expected nothing. I fucking expected nothing. So I got an email back the next day, and it happened to be from the head of their marketing. And it was like, hey, man, we're really sorry that no one responded to you. That almost would have been enough. To be like acknowledged by a major organization all you that is shit all over. All you wanted was some acknowledgement, right? This, this, this all you want. Some acknowledgement. Acknowledge me. That's all you Don't wanted. Get hit. Don't get hit, right? I probably would have been good with all of that. And um it he answered with, I'm really sorry. Um, also, what's your channel? I don't respond. I immediately walk downstairs and I go, uh. Hey, hon, how would you feel if I started a YouTube channel, you know, opening toys? And she's like, I guess that's fine. Why? <laughs> I was like, well, uh, this guy asked me if I have a channel. So uh, I felt like I should make one and start with the toys that I have right now. Okay. So that's exactly what I did. I started a channel, I jumped on YouTube, I started a channel, no idea what the fuck I'm doing. And the first one was called Tony Reviews a Toy. Rat. Reviews a Toy. Tony Reviews a Toy. Tony Rat. Okay. It evolved from Tony Reviews a Toy to Tony the Toy Rat. But still, Rat, symbolic of Reviews a Toy. So that's where it started from. I had literally one post. I got like two views and I sent them back an email. Hey, by the way, here's my channel. And he's like, great. Let me send you some stuff. And I was like, what? He gonna send stuff? Guys, you know, at this point, I'm elated. 
Like, I'm mm -hmm. over the top. I'm like, this motherfucker gonna send me. <laughs> so, of course, I go downstairs and I tell my kids and I tell my wife, uh, yeah, guess who's the man? Uh, a month later, still nothing had shown yeah. up. I'm starting to look like I got egg on my face. You know what I'm saying? Like, full on, right? I'm like, fuck, man. So I, I just I just reach out one more time, like, hey, how you doing? Remember me? Uh, did you say you were gonna you were gonna send some things? He goes, Oh yeah, man, it should be there in like, you know, whatever, a few days. I'm like, yeah. Um, reality is in about two days after that, there is a ring at the bell. And I go downstairs, and there is two ginormous boxes labeled Diamond Select Toys. And I was like, ha, 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 the blue stop. And I grabbed those shits, and I wound up making a video, which was, you can probably go back in history and find it, which is basically me running down the stairs. When you wish upon a star. And then I bring the toys upstairs, and I open them up. And that was the genesis of Tony the Toy Rat. So I opened them up. I got a few views. I told him about it. He's like, here, let me send you some more shit. I, this is not, I've talked to a thousand people. This does not happen. This just fucking doesn't happen. So I just kind of fell in. He must have been in a good mood. I, I don't know. I don't know. He hadn't seen me before, so he didn't know what I looked like. He just started going. And then I, I got some levels of success. Um, one of my posts wound up getting like, 40,000 views, which was like this uh, this Incredible Hulk. I'm not sure if you can see my shit back here. The Incredible Hulk setups back here. So I, I did this whole, you know, all of the Incredible Hulks and, you know, the differences between them. And that wound up being successful enough for him to send another group and then another group. And then it is what it is now. So I don't work for them per se, but I have had the, the joy of not having to pay for a statue in, you know, a year and a half now. So I, I continue to um, amass new things and I get to sit in here and play with them. So basically I do my first part of the, the day from 6.30 to about 5, 6 o'clock at night, get my first 12 hours of work in. And then I'll open up toys and I'll review toys and I'll edit to like 9 or 10 o'clock at night and then I'll post to like 11. So I post on all of the social media sites. And then I'll watch a show with the wife. And then I'll go to sleep. So the day starts like that. And then on the weekends, I probably stay up to like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning doing the same shit. So okay. there's that. That's what the fuck Tony the Toy Rat is. That's the genesis of Tony the Toy Rat. And that's how, I, that's how it came about. Now, today... What we have going on is stupid. There is so much shit going on in the world of the toy rat because I'm a greedy, greedy bastard. And I felt like now is the opportunity for me to shift away from construction and remodeling and doing shit I have less fun with to doing shit I have more fun with. So um, my background happens to also be in high technology. So I pulled together a website. I created Toy Rat Enterprises. And I got to meet a whole host of people who are in the industry from Marvel, from DC, from Image, and from a lot of independent comic books that you have never heard of before. And that's all thanks to some friends I have who run a Comic Con in North Carolina called Fayetteville Comic Con. Um, they have supported me from jump, so let's give them a big up. Man. Yeah, shout out to Fayetteville Comic Con. Let's give, let's give them some acknowledgement. Let's give them some of that. Yeah, yeah, let's give them some of that. Let's give them some love. We definitely are. Yeah, we respect, we respect I, them. I, I've been to a lot of these cons, man. They're the ones to me that champion um, early talent the most. Early talent the most. You know, they, they go back and they delve into the specifics of uh, comic books with actual creators. But they're also helping to bolster a whole new group of people that you've never heard of before and are ultra talented. So they're outside of the scheme of Marvel, DC, Image, Dark Horse, all those places, Valiant. Um, so I decided after knowing enough of those artists and watching them suffer... Here's some shit people don't know about artists, bro. 
Those motherfuckers are suffering even when they're famous. Okay? The guy who does the Red Hulk, Jason Key, I think he's an excellent colorist. But he also hits like 50 different cons a year. Now, I started asking the guys, man, is this some... Um, are you trying to make, you know, extra dough? Or is this like a part of your salary? You know what I'm saying? In conjunction with what you got paid for whatever you did. The vast majority of them need those Comic Cons. They actually need people to come in and see them and buy prints from them and take a look at the new work they're doing or they will be shit out of luck. And even if they do the Comic Con, sometimes they don't know people. They walk right by you. The people walk right by you. They, they, don't, they don't give you the amount of time it takes for you to introduce your world to them. So you really have to want to walk by someone you've never heard of before, take a look at some shit you might think is suspect, and then sit there and thumb through it. Sometimes people don't want you just thumbing through this, so you got to buy it. Yeah. And that creates um, yeah. a problem for the artist. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So I came up with an idea. Uh, and the idea was to help bolster... The intellectual property of independent comic books by creators that you know and love, but who are not affiliated with the giant comic book creators. Okay. So there are a lot of people doing these indie books on their own right now, but they don't have the marketing budget Marvel has or DC. So they're kind of forced into a predicament of social media whoring, followed by Comic Con whoring. And that is the depth and breadth of what they're going to get for marketing until they get some level of exposure. So my thought process was, in this day and age of me being a sculptor, a sculpting collector, um, I don't collect so much um, action figures anymore. I like, to, I like to fully pose stuff. So I thought to myself, what would be a good way to introduce this independent comic book in a way that would get everybody sort of interested in the toy world and so the sculpt was born and the sculpt is a game show that is specific yes. for independent digital sculptors to be able to help bring these intellectual properties to life all right i talked to these uh independent comic book owners and i pitched them the idea and they were elated not only do they want to have a bust or a statue of their own character but i think they immediately saw the potential for the marketing of that statue to be able to bring with them to alternate locations and help push the narrative behind the storyline that they have created okay um it's a lot harder to get that shit moving than you might think though so you know the internet is full of scams yeah. and i need digital sculptors yeah right i need digital sculptors and so i reached out to the digital sculptors all over the place and all of them are basically telling me Bafungu, we don't know who the fuck you are you know you're probably trying to get my bank account information and siphon my life away or steal my property my intellectual property and give yeah. me nothing so the sculpt is actually meant to help those uh independent sculptors those digital sculptors whether they be novice intermediate or expert to actually earn some coin and get some notoriety for the work they're doing so our show is going to be similar to like ink masters right the idea here is you don't win you don't get shit that's life homie you know uh a lot of these sculptors they want something for their effort and their time what we're offering them is marketing their services marketing how they do it giving away their instagram or their patreon or you know wherever they're hosting their digital files so that if you do like their work just like ink master you can go see that guy who got kicked off the show and you can get him to do your tattoo but you ain't getting no money unless you win so we have 11 episodes each episode is based on a different independent comic book each one will have a total of five and no more five digital sculptors those digital sculptors will get reference material from the artists who have created their books then they have three weeks start to finish 
to create a digital sculpture. Then we had to find a way to get that digital sculpture here so that our body of judges could actually take a look at it and determine who actually won that episode. Okay. Each episode winner wins a thousand dollars. So our sponsors are covering the cost of that. And we had to come up with a logistical method of actually acquiring the sculpture after it was created. So we had to go uh, create a new affiliation with a company called the 3D Shop Uptown, which is out of Virginia. And what we are going to do now is receive the digital files from the contestants, send them to our partner, the 3D Shop Uptown, and they're actually going to physically print those out for us so that the judges can take a look. Okay. So what that allowed us to do was have international participation. Now, I don't care where you are. It doesn't matter because I'm not worried about shipping anything or anything breaking and transitioning. It's just whatever you said in your file is exactly how it's going to print out. Cool. After it prints out, it goes to our judges. We've got three fairly, fairly decent uh, judges in terms of um, the amount of following that they have. We have Canon Doll X. You may not have heard of her, but if you have, then you know she's all over the place. She actually works for Diamond Select Toys as their primary reviewer. So she gets nice. everything first, nice. and they, they actually bolster her on their website. We have her, and she's, she's awesome people. I'm going to turn that off. She's, uh, not only is she really cool people, um, but she's bouncing from Comic-Con to Comic-Con as cosplay very often so it kind of ties into the narrative that we laid out together so you guys have a review have from Miguel. like uh, you guys have a professional reviewer from one of the top if not the top statue maker on the market yeah well not the top one of, the, one of one of the top guys one of the top guys in our branch in this price point yeah in this, in our range. this price yeah, point. yeah. Right. Yeah, and right, I range, exactly. And, and, we're, and we're talking about, and, and and we're talking about within a few hundred dollars in that range, guys. We're not talking about like oh, a twenty dollars statue. We're talking about a few hundred dollars for a statue. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that's what we're talking about. Well, and the I think good point. There's two types. Um, they have uh, sort of a premier, a premium statue type, mm -hmm. and those are usually made of resin, mm -hmm. and those are the ones that are like breakable, but usually very detailed and heavy. Um, and they run, you know, they can run upwards of, of a couple hundred bucks, but usually don't break like three, three fifty, something like that for their resin. But stuff like uh, I'm going to pull one up for you right now. I just uh, reviewed this this robe and I, I really only reviewed it because X-Men 97 took away her ass. So I, I, I really wanted to see whether or not Diamond Select Toys put her ass back on. And I think you can see uh, they did. So. I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna get more people asking me why I showed so much of her ass, but you know, hey, this, there this is, is this is this is this is this is what your community is into, man. Into Rogue's ass, apparently. Yeah, well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know a community that's not into Rogue's ass. Uh, but that statue right there is only forty five dollars, right? And they have stuff in the line that's even lower than that. But just kind of depending on what you got, like I've got this Wolverine, which is a mini bus. Check this guy out. This guy right here is one of the Pretty coolest dope. damn mini statues that I have, but it's a mini Thank bus. But this little guy, I'm doing that with my hands. You can see the scale here. That's uh, that would be 150. So if you look at these scale differences, okay, yeah, that's a that's a mini bus. You get this whole one at 45, but this is a light PVC, and this is a resin bust of Wolverine. And it would be closer to 150. That's so you know, that's therein lies the the cost the cost differential for yeah, those. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 that's that's pretty dope. That's I, I, I don't I don't. While we're showing stuff though, we're gonna get back into the judges. But while we're showing, stuff, I just wanted to pull. I just wanted to pull this bad boy. Yeah, out. I just want to pull that up. I just want so to pull this bad. The uh, the next judge. Well, what you got? What you got? Oh, all right. You know, full disclosure. I really wanted that one, and he wouldn't give it up, y'all. He really wouldn't. I'm glad he kept it, but it really this should live. You can see it should live here. Hey, this this resin is nice. Right? This is beautiful. It should. It should. It, Nobody's favorite podcast. Look, man. And tell them that should live here. We're talking about. I'm get a lot okay? of people hitting me up like, "Yo, bro, yeah, like you got you a wrestling guy, bro. You got wrestling belts and shit. Why you got that?" 
They gonna be, they gonna be yeah, hitting me up. Yeah, but it's, it's cool. You need some, cool. you need some, you need some, you need some AEW stuff. I'm just saying. That's some you know, fucking trading cards. I got, I got stuff in boxes over here. I got mini maids and I got. Well, what's this? What's this? Oh look, a little Britt Baker. Just little Britt Baker <laughs> all the socks. Oh, all, 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 all stuff that I'm sure uh, we could work out some negotiations on. Uh, but Let's in seriousness, that. the second, the second one of my judges is from toy quest 101 and okay. toy quest 101 anyone in the, in the toy world who looks up reviews that guy just got back from sao paulo brazil where i believe is prime one studios who sent him down there so that he can go tour their space and look at toys he's got like a hundred thousand subscribers um and he's got a really cool backstory because he started this whole toy thing with his daughter because she's on the scale um, okay. autism scale so they they kind of focus on autism speaks and and doing thing in that community but the genesis of his fame if you recall it that now is is based in him doing something really cool with um you know bringing attention to autism and it, doing it through this really great relationship he has with his daughter and and and, and because of that they have opened up some really cool shit and i'm super jealous i'm super jealous i i don't even want to say what i'm thinking you know I, I wish i had a child that i that had a disability so i can you know push it out there that's terrible you should never want that that's a horrible joke and it was just a joke okay but in reality i really admire that team i think they do a fantastic job he's got an awesome following and i'm really appreciative they said yes to being a judge and then following that we have an actual sculptor who is a digital sculptor by trade who has worked for Diamond Select, Prime One Studios, XM Studios, Disney, McFarlane Toys, and his name is Rocco Tartamella. And a lot of the statues you see behind me were actually designed and developed by him. So right. he's our Rocco third. Rocco been around the block, Rocco has been around the block, man, and he he does really phenomenal work. So Canon Doll X, um, Toy Quest 101, and Rocco Tartamella are our primary judges. And then the fourth judge is always going to be the content creator. So whoever made the comic book or whatever it is that we're describing that we're trying to pull into life, they're okay. an actual fourth judge. With room still for a fifth. So, you know, we're talking to some really high level digital sculptors right now for helping us out for episode to episode and actually being one of those uh one of those so, judges for us. So I have a question. The sculptings, yeah. right, that the people are making, the sculptures that the people are making, are these are these um panels that are actually in the comic strips, like in the comic book? Or do they have to recreate that or are they making their own scene based on the characters? It's a great question. It's an excellent question. So, because the sculptors have asked that very same question, <laughs> what we have done to this point is, and this is typical, mind you, uh, for anyone creating a skull, they need reference material mm -hmm. um, and criteria. Reference material and criteria. So we're allowing the owners of the IP to set the criteria. Okay. What we're doing first is we've got another partner in crime, and they are called the Brothers Boyd. And they are two brothers who basically I have tasked with doing the initial interview with the comic book creator. So they will go over in great detail what's in that comic book, the characters that are in that comic book, what the owner of the IP would like to see. And that goes along with the reference material that we hand over to the sculptors. Now, at this juncture, the one that we're working on for episode one, we're a little in the rear, but what we're working on for episode one right now is called Flawed. And that is by comic creator Chuck Brown, who is an Eisner Award winner who just came off of Disney's Scar. So if you want to check out any of Chuck's work, he's all nice. over Image. Nice. Um, of course, he's got his own book, which is called Flawed. But yeah, I mean, when you get an Eisner Award winner, wanting to participate in something like that it brings your blood up pretty quick and the question that i got to answer yours uh from most of these creators was do we need to stick to any particular outline so here's your character do what you want nice keeping in mind that the owner is going to choose 
he, the ultimate choice is going to be on the sculpt that he deems the best for the character. Nice, so nice. they have asked questions like, can we go with an enemy style? Can we do a cartoonish style? And my answer is, you should do what you think is going to win. Yeah. You should do what you think is going to win. In the end, that's going to be um, up to the judges. And I, I don't, I'm, I'm the host. I don't get to be the judge, unfortunately. I, I, I don't feel like I'm there yet. I'm going to let these people with the larger resumes i feel like Make that's call on where i feel like that's out. dangerous if you want to do the if you if you take in the comic and you're like you know what i'm gonna do it in the anime style you better hope these judges like anime because if they don't you kind of well, back yourself into a corner with that one man you better do, you better do your damn thing you better, you better make them thing. like anime you know what I'm <laughs> i yeah, think if yeah. you're gonna roll in that direction so my that's that was my emphasis is not to okay um to overplay my hand and tell them what they had to do unless it was criteria that was driven by the intellectual property owner. Made sense. So Made sense. they're going to get to pick what that is. They can pick your background. My advice to you is I'd use the reference material as much as possible. But um, in the end, someone else is going to select them. As soon as they select them, we're going to send out digital payment and it's going to go to, you know, whatever information they gave us so that they can, they can. Uh, nice. So, so stick to the script guys. Stick to the script, bro. Stick, Stick to, to the script as much as dope. possible. Yeah, man. Anyway. Yeah. But that's 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 dope. So what else? What else is going on after that? After the, each winner, you said gets a thousand dollars. So what does that mean? That there's more than one winner. Clearly, is there a, is is there a grand? Yeah, prize? No, so each, uh, oh, so you're, thank you. So there's a grand finale. So each one, there's only going to be one winner per episode. So mm -hmm. um, in a, and it's an eleven episode regular season. So at this point, and it's shit money, everybody. I know that this is season one. Give me a fucking break. Uh, but First of all, this is, we, we in a time of inflation. That's good money. You know what I mean? You know how much yeah, eggs were like $17 think, two weeks ago? One, 100. <laughs> 100. And the reality on that is if you're at home and learning your craft and you are not gainfully employed by someone who needs these skills, the best way for you to get that job is to be able to show what you're capable of doing. And I think this is the best method for someone in that predicament to be able to uh, illustrate what they're capable of doing so yeah that being said 11 grand on the table for the first 11 episodes but we have a grand finale for episode 12 which we expected to be in december may just slightly go over that but episode 12 is a ten thousand dollar episode that's the grand finale that's right so all told we got you know you can win twenty one thousand and then you'll be asked to come back. Now, here's the secret. The secret in the sauce. Toyota Enterprises is not just in it to help the uh, downtrodden comic book creator, nor are we just here to illustrate the skills of sculptors. There is a business to be had here. Um, just like Diamond Select Toys or XM or Prime One Studios produces licensed material, from Marvel, mm -hmm. DC, Image, etc. Toy Rat Enterprises seeks to be the primary manufacturer for independent comic books and their sculptures. So, okay. that's right. When okay. a winner is awarded uh, the, the, their money and a statue is selected, we will then turn to the intellectual property owner of the book and say, would you like to mass produce your statue? At which point, if they say yes, the licensure is held with Toy Rat Enterprises, and we will be the primary point of contact for manufacture and sales. At which point, the sculptor who won that thousand dollars is now in for a percentage of all sales in perpetuity on that statue. Nice, and nice, and 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 at, and at which point, at which point, the Toy Rat will get you everywhere statues are sold, and you know, you'll begin your 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 intellectual property will turn into. The next pos possibly, God willing, the next Marvel, next DC. There you know you go. I mean, it could be the it, next or, or or the next independent blockbuster, one way or the yeah. other. You know, there's a lot of those that came out and then and they weren't super affiliated with one of those books, but they had really great content. Yeah, like um, I love Invincible. I don't know if Invincible you know, was independent or not when they before they got that Amazon deal, but I love that show. That was pretty dope. I heard oh, their image. That's a comic book. Their image. Okay. That's that's Robert Kirkman and uh yeah, and yeah. Uh, image. So yeah. yeah. Is it him? Yeah. So yeah, Robert Kirkman was also the guy who created The Walking Dead. 
Yeah. You guys know that. Yeah, but yeah, uh, yeah. They got a new show out now. Yeah, Grimes is back. Thought he was dead for 20 years. The Ones Who Live. <laughs> yeah, that one. Live. Was that, that was yeah. what called. They actually yeah. did an offshoot. There's there's three there's like three different ones. One with Daryl running through the woods. One in I the like city that one. is actually the, in New York. Yeah, the city one is cool. I like that one. The city the, the city one is cool with um Negan and and, Negan. and, and, the, and yeah. um the girl and uh I forget her name. And but I didn't like the Daryl one. I'm like, first of all, it threw me off. As soon as it comes on, dude ends up in France. You floated from America all the way to France somehow, my man? How? How did that happen? <laughs> I could as soon as I saw that, oh, I, heard no. it, I was like, "This is a dub for me, bro." Yo, there, there's some things. There's some things about. I mean, I, I I watched all the the original Walking Dead, and it got really shitty at the end, bro. It got really shitty. Like they just went over the top with like yeah, it was how people shitty. could get torn apart. It was just it was just it was just dumb. It was, it, was, it became a reach after out good material. Yeah, I mean, you had a point. You know, I I, I think that. In, in situations of dystopian nature like that, you have to tackle reality. Here's one thing they never tackle. I know your motherfucking breath stink. What do y'all niggas do in the brush team? How come no one got stained ass, yellow, tartar gunk, nasty face teeth? Yep. That's one. Two, yep, yep. what are y'all using yep. to wipe your ass and where are you shitting? Why is that never tackled? I'm running, you know, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running, I'm running. I'm I'm scared. I need a shit. What? what Absolutely. Is that happening? Absolutely. What is that happening? What? Never tackled. Never fucking tackled. How about this? How come there's no zombie animals? Why is there not a zombie dog? Why is there not a zombie bear? How can you go swimming without there being a zombie shark? They had that one, the one zombie tiger. That was it, I believe. The one tiger zombie. That was it. They had one. But other than that, was right. he, he was I believe he turned. Zombie. That was real. He. Was, I thought he turned they into him. They had I, a Shiba. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shiba, oh, didn't she turn into a, yeah, didn't she turn into a zombie now? No. They oh. eat that motherfucker, and it was done. I was like, how no. you going to eat them? Yeah, that's kind of true. There's no zombie birds. You would think, like, like if, if, if like, the crows is picking at the zombie corpses, they would turn into, like, a zombie crow or vulture, a buzzard. Zombie I, buzzard. In the Where the zombie buzzards? First episode, there was um, a deer that Daryl was chasing through the woods. And he's chasing it the whole time, and the zombie gets it and bites it, and it's dead. And it's just dead. Now, they can't eat the meat because they think the meat is tainted. But if the meat is tainted, then that bad motherfucker should be a zombie. Should have been a zombie deer. Missed yep. opportunity. Two we, missed opportunities. Missed opportunity for a zombie deer and a missed opportunity for a meal because clearly the meat was good. Yeah, it's clearly good. It's not zombie, dog. What's the problem? What's the problem, bro? What's in there? I don't See, get this, it. Is, this is, this is so why you would survive. This is why you would survive, man. You gotta know. You gotta know how you gotta get that ass wipe going. You know what I'm saying? It's got it. Something's gotta happen. And it's been a, that's a, that's a stressful setup. But Invincible, uh, as soon as that shit came out, I was like, whoa, yeah. that's real. Yeah. That's and that's see, that's one of those. Could you not see that being a movie, like a live action setup? Yeah. Instead of them making a thousand Absolutely. fucking Avenger movies, they need to make one Invincible. Give me one of those. The key about the for me the Avenger movie setup is that they have a lot of material. The comic books, if you just stuck to the script, yo, you would see the most amazing things. Like that whole snap scenario with Thanos, it was good. We all loved it. Ain't got shit to do with the comic book. That's some bullshit. Thanos was in love with Lady Death, and all that shit he did, killing people, was really to appease. Her. That oh, was their for the point. Women. It's it's for the woman, bro. A lady, she was. She's death. She's a woman. So when he was little, his face was all fucked up, and she was the only one that came to visit him. And that was the reality of that situation. So that that they bury a lot of things to try and humanize the characters in the movies. That the comic book said, "Fuck you and your humanization." Wait, and shit. so she was a cool. Okay. So so because she came to visit him when he was a child. And he got older, and he was on her like, "Oh, I want her." So she was like, already like she an old, to old woman. <laughs> yeah, she she didn't want nothing to do with him as an old man. So in order to get her attention, he's killing the universe. It had that's nothing crazy. To do with the morality of usage of materials and how shit is running out, he gave no fucks about that. He was trying to get the leg on Lady Death. That's what it is. Okay, oh, that's what man. that was. And they changed that whole narrative around. And if you never read the comic books or know the story, you wouldn't know that shit. 
So but Thanos killed. Thanos snapped. Dimension. Thanos uh, destroyed half the universe for some ass. Is what you're saying? Essentially, yes. That's correct. Yes. That is Did he get the ass? Yeah. Well, I mean, you have to read the comic. I gotta go find the comic. You know the comic. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So here's the key. He doesn't really get to finish the snap. You need to read the Infinity Gauntlet series and realize that there was a lot of characters that were involved in there, including the X-Men, including Adam Warlock, which came out later, that they made a mockery of in the Last Guardians of the Galaxy. And he was um, a quintessential force of beating Thanos in, in the end when he had the gauntlet. But hmm. you are oh, you looking it up? You trying to see if I'm right? Nah, I'm trying to see. I should have been. I'm, nah, I'm trying to see why these, <laughs> these sons of bitches lied to us in the movie. <laughs> Because John Sweden in the, the boys. Yeah, because some shit is unpalatable. Nah, bro. You know, we, they you they know, don't think that you guys are going to get it. You ever seen Saw and all that shit? What <laughs> fuck? Yeah. It's a lot, it's a lot worse stuff than telling I, us that Thanos killed for But like, ass. you know, homie, you got to remember who owns who owns Marvel now. Disney. They be the showing us worse than that. that. Showing us worse shit than that. The mouth, yeah, but the... The mouse brand keeps keeps people keeps shit at bay, so you know they change a lot for the narratives. That's not exactly comic books, which is also mm -hmm. why I like focusing on some of this independent stuff. Like, yeah, have dope. you seen Berserker? You saw Berserker? You the seen you seen this before? That's no. that's Keanu Reeves. By the way, I'm not sure you can uh -oh. see that. Nice, I see this it. Book it. I, I picked that recently. Yeah, Keanu Reeves owns this book, and this is embodiment of Keanu Reeves. Berserker is off the chain, fire, good. You really need to check out Berserker if you haven't had that one in. Nice, Let's nice, see. nice. I'm going to pull up. Ah, oh, man, I should I should have really had some stuff ready here. You're about to learn some, you're, you're about to about some gems out. over here. Fucking Thundercats. That shit is nice. This is a holog holographic? Yeah, I, I paid extra for that damn thing, but you know. All the new Thundercats are coming out right nice. now. That's actually by Rob Liefeld. Rob Liefeld hadn't drawn anything in forever. If you know anything about him, he's the guy who created Deadpool. Oh. So the X-Force and Deadpool were created by Rob Liefeld, and now he drew this cover for Thundercats. Does he have anything so, to do with, with you know, the adaptations of Deadpool now? I I, I think that um, the last I saw is like they, they might go to him for like you know, little small stuff, but he doesn't really have any authority there. Yeah, he doesn't I've... own the character. He's talking about okay. Marvel. Yeah. And that's a okay. that's a big thing against independent comic books versus Marvel and DC. So if I work for Marvel and I create Deadpool, which is now a massive character, mm, I ain't get that? shit but yeah. my paycheck, homie. Yeah. And when I leave, Deadpool stays there. And if you try and fuck around, the mouse will have your ass in a trap quick. Yeah, so don't fuck around. You can't. The mouse will take your house. So Marvel, you watch out. Yes, the mouse will take your house. I love that. <laughs> oh, the mouse will take your house. That's real talk. Um, and it is true. That's real. So you can't really mess around when you you get the benefit of of knowing that the character you created is like gonna live forever in one of these massive organizations because they'll cross utilize them and do all kinds of shit in the storyline but then you got to look back at it and go god damn i could have created my own comic book and had this character and benefited from it in xyz ways so ultimately i think that's why you see a lot of people um on the independent comic book circuit okay. is one i want to own my intellectual property two if you want to be seen by those big guys you got to put out some work first yeah, um, I can imagine it, it is difficult. going against the going against the 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 House of Mouse machine and trying to get your images and your your designs and your graphic novels and comics and and statues out against theirs. Yeah, I can see them just shutting it down. No, don't no, Target. Don't put nothing in your stores. Don't 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 let them in your stores. Walmart. Don't let them in your stores. How are you gonna you get anything? Want out? my stuff or you want theirs? Yep. Exactly. That's yeah. Hello, welcome to the scope. Hello, Toy Ride Enterprises. And, and that's where you come in, boy. Who, that's it. We're an outlet for people just like that who are going to struggle against the machine nice. to get their properties and um, their designs out there and not squashed by a major organization. Now, look, let's be real. Now, I'm such a small pipsqueak startup organization. I fully expect that when this is expanded and we're grabbing market share, 
someone's going to come around and try and stick a, a sharp pencil in my ear. But if I got to that point, I've done my job. That means I have marketed effectively, I have sold enough stuff, and I have proven the model. And that model is to focus on the independent comic book creators and the independent sculptors to allow them both to shine yeah. and as a result, create an organization surrounding them. Nice. That's nice. what it is. Nice. So that's the sculpt. <laughs> nice. Well, the, look, look at this. Just communication. That's the sculpt. <laughs> nice. Nice. I mean, that's, that's, you know I like, I like, I like that you first, this, this, this is not even something that you started off trying to like make money off of. This is something that you just enjoy doing. You reached no. out to the guys. You was like, look, I ain't never even did a YouTube video. I had, I had no intention on no. even doing one. I just wanted you to appreciate the fact that I spent thousands of dollars on your shit. No, like, I I can get them. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I, I just wanted you guys to acknowledge I spent thousands of dollars on your shit. And then what did you get from that? All of this, you reached out. And, and what's crazy is you, without even knowing you have followed a business model that a lot of people do have a lot of success with and luckily for you though you only had to send out one email a lot of people send out hundreds of emails back to back to back and then finally get one person you lucked up sent out that email got it followed up on it didn't get discouraged by like oh shit somebody actually responded fuck then when then when they didn't when, when that stuff didn't come in a timely fashion you didn't reach it back out like, hey, motherfuckers, you said that you're going to do this. You reached out cordially. Hey, you know, you guys, were you, you know, were you, were you still going to send that to me? If not, cool. If so, great. Two days later, like you said, you got it. Right. And everything just, everything worked Boom. out how it was supposed to work out. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, that's. So, I mean, not, 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 not on wood. Not yeah. on wood. Everything so far has um has kind of fallen in my favor and if they fell off tomorrow and said you know tony the go fuck yourself we're not gonna do anything else with you i would still be eternally grateful in in the fact that someone took a chance on yeah let's face it an, an old motherfucker who had never been in that universe before and kind of fostered the growth along the way to to help me continue now listen i don't i don't want to make it out like they some church the vast majority of these organizations count on reviewers like me to do their marketing for them. Oh, absolutely. If those companies spent money like Disney spends money, they would go broke. So they count on the avid they collectors to share what they bought. Yes. Yes. So they count on the collectors like you and me to sit there and show other people, look at this badass. Venom with the two Spider-Mans yep. jumping out, you know, all of that. Because I know I want it, like, immediately because I'm a geek like that. But you know who didn't put that out there? The manufacturer. I, I didn't really see that until, basically, you started showing it to me. Right? And it was out there, of course. I know there was a, a PlayStation purchase, and there was a mm -hmm. lot of people who knew about it. But think about the people who didn't know about it, right? I wasn't going to buy a PlayStation. So if I wasn't going to buy a PlayStation, how am I going to know about the statue? Ah, so I count on you to tell me, look at this. And when you start telling me like, oh, I want this. So now it's a tandem synergy. Now, do I want a PlayStation? Do I want that statue enough to buy the PlayStation? You know, so, or do I want to just try and find this statue and trade with with the Nobody's Favorite Podcast for a bunch of AEW stuff? <laughs> hey, y'all, you're going to need a, you need half of AEW for that <laughs> i'll be i'll be here i'll be here trying to send you shit for a long time to get that so i know you know but i i think therein lies the truth which is they need us um it's a symbiotic relationship in the reviewer to marketing aspect they are spending a whole hell of a lot less to send me some toys that basically are at cost for them mm -hmm. plus the shipping of course um, and I'm going to sit there and spend hours and hours and hours, not only reviewing that, but then creating videos, not only finishing those videos, but marketing them on multiple social media channels. So every single time I make a video, I go into Instagram and dump it there. I go into TikTok and dump it there. I create a YouTube video short, a YouTube video long. So the short is only one minute. The long is a full review. How much is that already? Okay. Then you got to tag all that, put it up. And then I go into Facebook and that's where I spend the most amount of time. And you don't really get shit back from that. 
not hardly even the notoriety and how um i'm hoping to continue to grow the brand and be more successful is through the utilization of groups within the facebook meta universe right so those groups are censored and can be very very focused i'm now joined into sculpting groups that have you know a hundred thousand members so when i'm speaking to them about a sculpture or the sculpt game show i have a much larger audience the same is true if i'm pushing out a marketing video for uh the hulk you know for a resin hulk or <clears throat> whatever it is uh, obviously the more popular the character the more views you're going to get the more people who are going to be interested in it and things like that so you know i i kind of try to intersperse things that people love with mm -hmm. people things that people like with people the things that people hate so try, try to see what kind of works and i'm still kind of falling in and out of favor with people <laughs> it happens all the time it's a lot harder than i thought it would be really to get an audience that sticks with you you know what i'm saying like yeah, loyal, loyal, loyalty is now, rough loyalty is rough so rough and instagram is i i i could i could take it or leave it if you're being honest with you um I, I really don't give a shit one way or the other about instagram it's just i know people want to scroll through pictures and doom scroll so i'm like okay sure fine i'll draw it's, it. it's that instant gratification like oh i need i need some kind of visual stimulation so they just scroll in until something catches their phone yeah, give, me, give me something to look at i want to watch people pop pimples yep which I'm not gonna lie, I sometimes do. Bro, I have my, like my daughter okay. fucking will sit there and will, like listen to people who fucking great soap. I'm like, what the fuck is this? ASMR. Like, ASMR. What? Like, what the ASMR. fuck? Like, listening to people do weird shit. <laughs> Dude, I mean, so it's gotten to a point where when I'm not opening a toy, I'm going over to GameStop or I'm going to Walmart. Mm -hmm. And I've created this whole another segment called "Is It Worth It?" Yeah, so I've seen I'll just that. I've pick seen up it. a toy, dude. I, you should see the people in GameStop stare at you because at first I was like scared, and I was pick up my phone and I hit the record <laughs> button, and I go, "Hey, I don't know, huh? is it is it worth it?" Now I look at the guy behind the counter and I go, "Yo, I'm getting ready to record." I don't care if they know me or not. I'm walking in with my shirt and I'm like, okay, I just picked up this McFarlane toy for $24.99. This sculpt looks like shit. I can't believe GameStop is charging this much. I'm doing it right in front of the GameStop people and they don't kick me out. And I say, come on, you guys got to tell me. Is it worth it? I don't know. You tell me. You know, but something shit, along But shit lines. like that is, so, so, so shit like that is threefold. It's something that the customer needs. They need to know, hey, is that going to be worth me buying it? The 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 company yep. who made it and produced it needs to know, hey, people don't like this shit. And GameStop needs to know, hey, we need to stop putting this on our shelves. So you're, doing three, you're yeah. doing three things for free. You out here. Come on, man. Wait a minute. <laughs> it's about to get better. So Torre Enterprises has invested its time in international audience participation, not just for the sculpt, but also for is it worth it? So in very short order, at least from Toy Rat Enterprises, we will translate, but we have people all over the world about to start sending us toy reviews. So we'll know what things cost in France. Um, they, I'll know what they cost in the Philippines. I'll know what they cost in Nigeria. And we'll know what they feel like about them in those countries, in their languages, and we're gonna repost it everywhere. I wonder if so they have like whole Canadian. different stuff over there that we don't have here. That would be dope. They do. They nice. do. And that, that was the genesis of that of, of this was to see what else was available to us. And I started with a, uh, an organization called Toys in Action out of the Philippines. And they were reviewing toys to an extent, but shit that I hadn't seen before. So I reached out and we instantly linked up and, and became good friends. So um, they're now a part of the Toy Rat universe nice. Nice. and they're in the Philippines and not only are they going to be helping us with it, is it worth it and hopefully larger scale toy reviews from other companies um but they're also going to be helping us with cosplay cos printing which is the next part of this topic right here and you're going to be like what the fuck you don't have enough going on no so i'm a whore i said it okay um i look at 
these comic cons that we attend um mm -hmm. and at first I, I i i was in awe of how much time people spend putting together costumes what they will wear because let me tell you people will wear some sh crazy shit and and how much time it's taking them to pull things together so i wound up involving myself with several cosplay units and ultimately determining that i needed another use case for that 3d shop uptown that we partner with to do the sculpt so we're bringing them in and we're going to shoot an entire episode around 3d printing and the sculpt at one time nice but while they're at the con we had to come up with a multiple use case for them to be able to do things while they were there that earned revenue because they don't want to just be there doing just a sculpt which i'm going to pay for out of pocket but we'll talk about that another time so we came up with the idea of replacement parts for nostalgic toys so if you had something growing up that you love playing with and the shit broke and you can't find the replacement piece for it or the replacement piece you can't find cost several hundred dollars because people know they're the only one that have it well, we are now going to be able to scan that toy and print it out for you. Wait a minute. So hold on a second. So hold on. How do you like? I got. I got. I got. I got to hold. On. I got to get up for a second. I got. I got to get up. I got to hold on. Hold on. Hold okay. On. I got. I got. I know that was a bit of stroke of genius there, wasn't it? Woo. <laughs> and that wasn't even. I need a. I need. I need some production here. Somebody that could that, uh, produce it here to get my shit for me. But look. So you're telling me that I can get okay. my missing lightsaber for this for this Darth Vader yep. printed for me. That I've been, yeah. he looks ridiculous. He's just standing here with his fucking hands open all the goddamn time, holding nothing, <laughs> holding fucking nothing yep. on my shelf, just standing there looking stupid. Nice. Yep. I need that. Absolutely. Need Absolute fucking, fucking need it. And not only do I want to do it, I don't, not only do I want to be able to do it, I want to be able to do it on demand. So there are certain things we'll be able to uh, 3D paint, let's say, while you're at the Comic Con. And, and, what the ones that i attend especially the one at fayetteville is focused on customer experience so that's one of those things that you would come to a comic con and not expect to be there but be like elated at the fact that it was so uh, is that going to be like an a la carte service like when people it's made to yeah. order like you don't just have a stockpile you have to wait you will make it but it's going to take a couple weeks for you to get it just so being realistic could or it could be that we print it right there for you on site just kind of depends on oh, yeah, if you're at the con, if you're at the con, because because if it becomes a big business, you know what I'm yeah. saying, and people ordering offline, obviously it's gonna oh, take yeah. a little bit for shipping and and so on and so forth. But that's the plan. You just nailed it. You just nailed it. So that's the plan. There are lots of things that people will want that uh, would be incapable of being done in that time frame, especially if you're trying to do sort of um, grander production items, right? There's only so much work surface and that you can and time in a day for things to print because these yeah. things can come out slowly yeah. um so we are starting to focus on pre-orders and not just pre-orders are small but pre-orders are large and then you'll be able to run right now you can run through the con we're, we're focusing on getting that set up so you can run through the con um and make a request do a pre-purchase and pick it up at the con so we'll set it up weeks in advance you can come pick it up there or you can order it and it can be delivered to you the thing that you were you were missing for however long Sounds there it dope. is so that's only two so my 3d shop is there uh and they'll be printing for the sculpt they'll be printing these sculptures that will be coming out for the game show which is awesome for everybody to be able to see mm -hmm. however slow that comes out there is mm -hmm. the scanning of replacement parts for broken toys nostalgia or otherwise there is a full statue potential to create of nobody's favorite podcast. So if you would like to have your body scan and a statue made of you, we can do that. The 3D shop uptown will scan your body and we will print out that statue figurine for you. Now, it can be you in cosplay. It can be you and your friend, you with the dog. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we have the potential of basically print. Yeah, yeah. So that's a really cool one. Again, if I wanted a that one be to one scale. <laughs> as a replica of myself 
<laughs> I think it'll be expensive. I think that might be price prohibitive. Just Cost saying, I might need one of those. Like. <laughs> I mean, not for nothing, not if you're dating, I feel like everybody should have one. But um, that's not something we, we're probably focusing on more of a 1-6 type of okay. scale thing. Okay. But, you know, um, there, there's a lot of potential, you know, where that's concerned. I think um, the, the, not only the cosplay people, but the idea is not new. Um, uh, there's a man named Billy Tucci. He's an artist, fantastic artist. Billy Tucci is the creator of She. If you guys have never seen She before, she's a badass female warrior. I'll leave it at that. Look up She uh, by Billy Tucci. But anyway, Billy Tucci, who I was fortunate enough to meet at one of these cons, super cool guy. Um, he actually had a statue of himself sitting behind. And I was like, yo, what is that? And I picked it up. He goes, oh, it's me. And I'm sitting here. I'm like, why do I not have a me to walk around with? You know, so... The idea we didn't come didn't come to fruition on us sort of involving that level aspect until we we uh, created the partnership with the 3D Shop. That's pretty, which dope. led to an eventuality of that potential, right? Okay, so that's three. All right, print yourself figurines. The statues that come out from the sculpt contest, and then the replacement parts for nostalgic toys, etc. And now the last one. Toy Rat Cosprinting. So what we've come up with are, uh, there's a lot of different cosplay things that you can purchase online. That's a fact. Um, our market research led us to 25 major players who do specifically licensed things that you can purchase online. Okay. So our focus is none of that shit. Uh, fuck you and your license. That's the way we're feeling about it right now. And the thought process is, is to create a cosplay piece that can be utilized across costumes. So I'm going to give this one up. And it's the only one I'm giving up so I don't get fucking scooped here for the rest of it. We came up with... Uh, so let's talk about uh, Batman, for example. You can cosplay Batman. Batman's got a utility belt, right? Mm-hmm. Batman's got all these boxes on his utility belt. You can open up and you fucking throw a smoke pellet out and a fucking Chinese star or whatever you got. But the boxes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. He keeps his, so his condom position in there. With a condoms, you know, candies. You yeah, know, yeah man. You never know when you're running to that woman on, on the prowl. You never know. <laughs> on the prowl. Real talk. You know, you got to have the, the ghost skins. Whatever's in there, he's got it. <laughs> and you know, he's got several boxes and they're basically strewn across the belt, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the concept we came up with for this aspect of it um, was to create that box. Why I say that box? Because you don't need to have more than one, but you can buy as many boxes as you want. Mm -hmm. And it has a loop, so you can stick any belt through it. Any belt you want at all, you can put that box through. But wait, there's more. Uh, if you wanted to use that for instead of Batman, say the Punisher or fucking Daredevil and be red or where so many costumes utilize some sort of form or function in that yeah, way. Yeah, absolutely. We have created we have created a small circular um, magnetic insignia that you can switch out on the boxes. So they're partner products, obviously. If you want to play Batman, you have your box here. Here's your Batman maggot. It sticks directly onto the box, and you can put them all around. You got bat signals. You want to be Punisher? Punisher all the way around. You want to be... Nice. Name your thing. That's dope. So the idea is the cross-utilization for a multitude of different costumes. In, in that way, we're not specifically licensing uh, that material. Obviously, if you did logos for Batman and things like that, you'd have to... Um, compensate them appropriately and be licensed in that way but the idea and the thought process remains the same to be able to create uh, three-dimensionally printed objects that can be cross-utilized and now that is the fourth item that they're going to be taking care of us at the 3d shop mm -hmm. and they will be sold predominantly on toy rad enterprises and the toy and nice. also at the comic cons so Woo! so that's a lot of shit lot going on. on bro um that's a lot of shit you got going on. That's not all of it. So, it's <laughs> a lot. Um, I that was all of it. <laughs> yeah, question I have. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. Question I have for you is, 
I guess tier wise, quality wise, right? When I want a one of these costume, these cosplay copy costume things, or I want mm -hmm. one of these toy, toy or uh, replica toy parts. You know, what is mm -hmm. is there a tier of quality? Like, say I have the toy that I have I need a replacement part for is like a fucking a toy that I paid like over a hundred dollars for. It. As opposed to something that my mom got with ninety sure. cents store. So, is there a way that somebody's sure. gonna be able to, to, to choose sure. the type of quality they, they want for this replacement part or this costume part? Because I may my costume might be like super fucking intricate and detailed and really professional, and I might be going as Gambit. I got a fucking three hundred dollar leather trench on. I got the shit popped up. You know what yeah. I mean? So I need some good shit. So, is it gonna be like yeah. tiered? May be able to yeah. be. You know what I mean? Like, how's it gonna work? Yeah, no, no, I think it's a great question. Um, you know, on the toy level, tackling that part first. Mm -hmm. on, on on the toy on the toy level side of things, I think um, what you said resonates in that the cost of an item that you paid for it was a hundred bucks, and you know you would not hesitate to make sure you had everything you needed for that. So you probably want the best possible thing to come out. So there are multitudes of different three-dimensional printing mm -hmm. material that can be used, right? So there's resin, there's FRM, EDM, the the whole carbon, of all types different of material. Yeah. So so yeah, and it, it really does depend on two things: the material and the printer. Uh, <clears throat> so when we went to the 3D shop, they were able to show us a multitude of different printers and what their capabilities were. Uh, some of them print upside down and they come up this way uh, they all come up bottom to top yeah but some of them will print top to bottom and upside down and pull out that way um some of them will print in color and you they will change color throughout here is a perfect example this was a 3d print i picked up from the 3d shop right before valentine's day so and that prints in color and doesn't need to be painted stage. nope this is exactly how it came out didn't need to do shit so that's dope because you can pretty much i don't want to say guarantee but I, I would feel i would feel safer that that color wouldn't fade over time than something that was painted yeah no that's not this is never gonna this is yeah. never gonna fade over time yeah now you know with the with regard to like qualities like you can see when i spun that little guy around there were some little lines and things like that so sometimes it will require that the teams who are doing have to go and do a little sanding you know just to make sure they knock off a little lines and things like that but this was actually a major seller for them um, for the Valentine's holiday. They had this guy, and then they had a smaller version of it. But, you know, it was roses and hearts on a damn Charmeleon. How are you going to go wrong with that shit? Yeah, right. And really, they were selling them sort of in an Etsy format. So I'm not sure if that answers your question, but you can see the intricacy there. Let me go back to it real quick. Look at the eyes. I mean, that was all just printed. This is all just printed. So you the have to look like them up. Ordering, ordering off of it, and I'm sure you guys have a, a whole system in place. Like, oh, what, I don't. All right, so I'm not trying to give you. I'm, I mean, I would. I, 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 I happily offer ideas. You know what I mean? Um, is there a system where, like, say, say I just sent you guys a picture of a of like a UPC or a barcode, and you guys were able to bring up what that toy actually was, and then you could see from there like what part I would need, so that you could see exactly what that toy was made of Ooh. so you can print out what it's going to be that i need instead of me just telling I like that guy like i need a cyclops leg i need a cyclops left leg oh yeah, yeah, yeah. about three inches long <laughs> yeah no no i okay so i think you tackle two things there is one is about how to deliver what it is that you want done mm -hmm. and then there is you know the specifics of each piece so like if you sent one in with the barcode and it was an ornate piece it would be clear that you know you'd want to identify the specifics of whatever it was yeah but i don't as a, at this point right now i i'm pretty sure I, if you were able to generate a upac code that would send the team to a website that had the measurements that would be a good start but if you wanted it to be exact they would likely either need to have an STL file, a file that would generate what was missing, or they would likely need to scan okay. the existing whatever that item is so that they could match 
you know, that and then sense. repair it that makes way. sense. Okay, so that this makes you take you wouldn't want if this was broken here and you were missing her hands right there, even though they could probably print that little hand for you, you wouldn't want to be the one to put it on. Yeah. So, you know, there, there is a service level oriented aspect to that makes that sense. first off, they need to identify what it is you're after, and then two need to identify how best to make that repair on nice. your behalf. Okay. So that makes sense. There's some nuanced sense. detail. I think it needs to be fleshed out some more. To be honest with you, but on on a conceptual level, um, it works out really well. Yeah. Now these you are know, dope ass ideas. Tough. And and just so you people know, this 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 uh, when this comes out and you finally hear it, this is gonna have a production and publishing date and time. So anybody who come out with these fucking ideas later, you ain't nah nigga, nah motherfucker. Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's lawsuits that our people owns the Tony the Toy Rat you know, and, and and partners for all of this. Yeah, I mean, that's right. So. And just in case y'all didn't already know, nobody's favorite podcast happens to be one of our sponsors. Just so we're all on the up and up here, okay? Happily. You can check the toy, you can check the toy rat .com and You can check the rest of our sponsors. And we are, uh, you know, probably advocating nobody's favorite podcast there as well. Yeah, so what, so what we're going to do is we we're going to try to do some, um, we're going to try to do some partnership merch. You know what I mean? That's, that's, uh, let's talk about that. Let's, let, let, let's, 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 uh, when we get behind the scenes. We already got some toy rat partners. You know what I'm saying? Partnership merch going on, going on right now. So that's actually part of the conversation matrix we are having with the, uh, with our financial partners. Nice. Um, one of the things we're doing from the, the Toy Rat Enterprises, as if I hadn't fucking said enough already, you greedy bastards. <laughs> um, we are, with all of our partners and everybody who affiliated with the Toy Rat Enterprises, we're basically, um, yeah, we're turning them into Toy Rats. So, uh, you know, it, in one sh way, shape, or form, and in a limited licensing capacity, uh, in partnership with people like nobody's favorite podcast uh we're creating some apparel so if you want to support nobody's favorite podcast proceeds do get to them to make sure they can continue creating this great content okay and supporting our efforts on the other end with their marketing but you can take a look at our merchandise there and uh we're always open to suggestions but right now we're making toy rats of all of our partners and um we we hope that you would get out there and support those efforts because um creating this shit takes a lot of time bro. A lot of effort and more often than not ain't nobody getting paid this so, listen oh, man, we all we all still gotta is that real people That's think real, that man. people think that the job starts when you press record and the job ends when you press stop no man this is a whole fucking yeah no nah. this is the, the team of me you gotta do production, yeah. everything. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. thankfully, thankfully, I have a good um team working with me over at 153 Pod Street. Um, that's who, uh, pretty much this podcast is produced through. Um, great people over there that I'm partnered with. It uh, it, it really helps to have a good team behind. Let's let's, let's give claps to everybody involved for um nobody's favorite podcast for 153 Pod Street and for Toy Ride Enterprises. Let's give some claps. Let's give some claps, man. Yeah, yeah, it's my dad, my dad, Yeah, it's 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 joint team efforts <laughs> everywhere around the board, man. Um, honestly, Rod, I appreciate you coming through. I appreciate you like giving us all this information, all this secret information, man. Like this is yeah, stuff it's that all secret. I I think I I marketed the shit out of myself today, so <laughs> I appreciate oh, this, this, this. You know what I mean? But this is what I want people to be able to do. Use utilize my platform to be able to speak your word, speak your truth, speak your business, talk about whatever you need to do, man. Like this is nobody's favorite podcast, but it's also about you. So I mean, the only the only way it's really gonna be nobody's favorite that's is if they don't like your podcast. Yeah, that, exactly. That's, it, that's right. We we gotta keep we gotta keep bringing out the content about you guys that nobody wants to see, so we can continue having this you know nobody's right. favorite podcast. That's right. Somebody has to do it, for God's sake. You know what I mean? Somebody has to put out all this shit that no I, one wants to fucking see. Exactly. So we know that it actually happened. Exactly. Ironically, that's how we stay in business over here. That's why we keep. That's how we keep the lights up. That's how we do. <laughs> how we keep oh man all right uh, Sh shameless yo. plug time man let us know all your social medias the youtubes let us know you know what i mean how the people can find you um you know whatever etc tony the toy rat wherever you social 
pretty much, man. If you if your Instagram go at Tony the Toy Rat, your YouTube is at Tony the Toy Rat, TikTok at Tony the Toy Rat, uh, Facebook Tony the Toy Rat. If you're in Facebook and you want to check out the sculpt, um, there is a sculpt page there. Nice. And if you want to learn anything more about the sculpt or what we're planning to do next or why I'm so crazy and doing 300. Uh, ideas all at once and all that shit head over to the toy rat.com and you can check out what we're working on in sort of an immediate fashion contact a member of the team um, you know we're always open to suggestion we're always open to new partnerships this is a growth metric this is a um, an area that someone of my age right now I'm 48 uh, this year and I feel like I, I don't have no time left so I'm playing this game like tomorrow's not here and that's why everything is happening now. This year is the year of now, right fucking now. Now. Absolutely. I'm not taking no for an answer. And so balls out there. You know, if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, just remember I tried it. Hopefully something I said today might inspire you to do the same. Nice, nice, nice. And with that said, everybody, I appreciate you for tuning in. This was another episode of nobody's favorite podcast here with tony the toy rat we're, we're, we're toy rats now too man we're all toy rats here nobody's favorite toy rats and um so next oh next, we, we, just so you guys hey, know, i'll tell you what what's uh, up? first 10 people to contact the uh, first 10 people to contact you and say they saw this right now i'll send them t-shirts boom tony oh, you, look at that look at that toy rat shirts oh you need that you need that in wardrobe all right cool 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 all right cool so Appreciate you again, yeah, man. Or, or, but, or you can pick a you can pick a cup too. So or you can get I, a toy rat cup. You can have the mouse with the cheese. I got toy rat cups. I got toy rat keychains. You got everything. You contact our boy Justin at Nobody's Favorite Podcast, and you tell him you sold a thing. I don't give a shit how many of you do it. I'll send you all free stuff. So how about that? that? Look at that. Look at pfft. you get free stuff. You get free stuff just for tuning into a show that you already watch and listen to and love. Oh can't beat that but we definitely gonna have uh tony on again soon we're gonna see the progress on these sculptures we're gonna see we are actually we're gonna have him on and hopefully maybe we'll get some behind the scenes looks at some of these things you never know he does give us the secrets oh, so. yeah, okay. he does give us the secrets so all day all day there's one there's one last one last tiny little miniature plug and you're gonna have to get at me at this because it's the end of the show we're not gonna get into another long discussion but my independent comic book creators are going to be holding their own cosplay contest. And here's how it works. You show up dressed as their character and you win. They're going to immortalize you in their comic book. Oh, so they're actually going to draw you and bring you into their universe. All you oh, got to yeah, do is show up in the cosplay of the character. That's it. We yeah, about, about, now, about, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Part two, we can talk about that because y'all about to get me to dress up and shit. I'm about to have a cape on. Part two, shit about this on that one. Oh, hell yeah. All right, peace, y'all. Appreciate you for tuning in. Later.